What's up guys? It's been way too long. ETH DAG size. It's going to be passing uh, 4 gig. It's not there yet. That's one of the things I was doing with this rig, but I got it, it working in. So this is a 4 gig uh, GTX 1050 Ti rig. It's a 13 card rig and we have this running right now. Go to PC view. You guys can see that running right now. So that is 13 cards running at about 13 point, almost 13.5 mega hash per card. That's still pretty full tilt these cards do not have these are the awesome zotac cards that do not have the six pin so this is just being powered by the riser itself um so there's no six pin requirement on this 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 rig's setting about about 750 watts it's on an rm 1000 power watt uh, power supply can you use a splitter on the six pin is it safe um so if you're coming off of a typical six pin that have two you can use those if you're using the pcie the six slash eight pin a, a dual uh, rail you can use that absolutely safely on two of those on two of the cards if you were to split to let's say that two into four because now you're using a, an adapter to split it again i would probably not do that because what you're going to end up pulling potentially is and, and this is done from our testing out here and there's a google sheet out there that i can show you guys we can pull all the way up to about 65 watts i mean there was times that we were pulling 70 watts out of the the riser itself so I, I think that was the max that we we ever pulled out of there and this monitor was showing us that if that's the case then that would put a pretty heavy that would put a if you split it four times and you're at 70 times that four you're going to hit the max of that single eight pin rail that's coming into into a, a, a power supply there's only a handful of power supplies that could actually handle that kind of load without burning it up. Do you even bother with mining on Celerons? No, I do not mess with the Celerons. It runs a rig down to it. I, we, we were doing some threads over to Celeron processors, and the problem is, is that it was actually causing the machines to, to have to reboot more often. We did put some cards, like if you guys remember some of the machines we built back in um, 17, there were some machines I had built with i7s in them. And there were some machines I had built with uh, with i5s, and we mined with those. Anybody know why Phoenix Miner and Claymore keeps recreating the DAG while in the middle of the mining, sometimes two to three times per minute? Off the top of my head, a couple things come up with that. One, if it's happening all the time, let's just say what could cause that to happen. One, when it's switching over to the dev fee, and it does the, the 30 seconds or a minute of mining for the dev, it's going to rebuild that because it's re it's like rehitting a new pool and it's just like reinitializing it. So that will trigger another DAG rebuild. If you have a fell over pool in your syntax and it doesn't hit its TTL, it's time to it's time to live essentially. It could trigger that second that second pool and then it goes and rebuilds it again. If you lean it out to just one pool and then you I think you do the negative no fee. I'd have to look at which what the syntax is again. It's been a minute, but you could try to get it to stop uh, doing the the dev fee temporarily because I think it takes a hit on hash and then see if it keeps doing that and what it is is probably triggering every time it switches. When did the A6 take over Bitcoin mining? A6 started taking over 2012, beginning of 20 or the end of 2012 into the beginning of 2013. You pretty much were out of mining with GPUs. You could still mine with GPUs and it was all whole cost benefit analysis at that time where you were pretty much not even covering your power. But when I look at, and I've, I've posted these logs, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, you should, because sometimes I randomly find some old pictures and videos of stuff from back then. But I remember posting one video, or one picture that I had taken from a two machines that I had 7870s when they first came out. I put them, I had two of them per machine item in Crossfire. And I had both those machines with four GPUs mining Bitcoin. And it was unprofitable at the time to do that. But it was still generating something like 0.013 something I want to say every day so like it would have made a made a single it was not worth it because it would have made it it would have took it like three months to make even a single Bitcoin but when you do the math on that like with those four GPUs it was like four GPUs probably cost at that time because those things were using about 580 600 watts of power for two of them they were about 280 plus the machine was not very efficient it was about 100 watts so you're looking at about $160 to get a Bitcoin. That's that's what I mean. So that's like right now, like what people 
why I think a lot of folks that are doing like Windows mining with NiceHash, they don't care what they're mining. They just know that they're getting paid in Bitcoin. And even though that looks like it's seven, like a rig like this, this rig right now on, if this was mining to NiceHash, which we'll have a different good discussion about NiceHash, because some people will pay more for the rental, your yield on a machine, like right now, this machine right now is yields anywhere from seven to $8 I have seen as high as 10, but I think the average is what it was getting around $8 a day. So a machine like this gets about $8 a day right now on NiceHash in Bitcoin. You're just, you're spending, uh, this machine's using 750 watts, 750 watts uh, at like 12 cents per kilowatt for a month, so around 80 bucks, or not even that, it's probably about 70 bucks. 70 bucks, you're earning $8 a day times 10 days, you're looking at 30 days. Uh, so times 10 days, 80 bucks, 80, 160, you know, two something minus your, your $80 in, um, in cost, you're looking at about 150 to 160 dollars in Bitcoin paid to your wallet right now with NiceHash with a machine like this. Now that doesn't seem like you're looking at cost benefit, like hey, that's going to cost me three grand to build that machine. What's the ROI on that? But what some folks are doing when you're like, well, why are people mining with that? Well, they're looking at the long game. They're looking at okay, 180 dollars worth of Bitcoin because if you already have some cost of the machine or you're able to get the hardware cheap, the difference, people are like, why wouldn't people just go buy the currency? Well, some folks, one, have no way to do that, meaning they don't have whatever country they're in, they don't have the on-ramps, or it's super complicated to get the KYC AML stuff set up. They're maybe suspicious of that and don't feel comfortable with it in whatever country they're in. So they're gonna take a different approach to where they're gonna contribute hash power to a network and get paid in a currency. Um, the fees are already manically taken out. Whatever you're paid is what you have. So I'm just building the case of why people would mine versus just buying the, the cash. They're looking at the long game that that $160 of Bitcoin Per month, if that 10 X is, that was a thousand bucks. Machine like this was paid, it pays itself off in three months. Over time, if you're hodling and you're just paying your expense, your power expense up front. And I've had folks that have been mining and following me since the beginning, like when I started making videos back in 2013, and have sent me messages to my my um, bisbytripping at gmail.com and of like, dude. Like I had one rig, I just took a chance, I had one rig. I've been paying for it since the beginning. Was able to quit my job, pay my house off. That's not, not like some like scammy story that comes on YouTube. That was just the facts of running one machine that had sunk cost, probably had to replace a few cards here and there because of the time and just accumulated cryptocurrency at a, at a trickle rate and just not had not sold it, right? It just been going to a wallet didn't, was actually scared to set it up. And the reason why they were reaching out was like, dude, I have no idea. I've been going to this wallet and this address shows that I have this much in it. And I don't even know how to bind it to a, you know, a source to be able to, to sell it. I mean, I've had those kind of emails where people are like, I don't even know what to do with this. Like it's going to this address. I can look it up. I know I have the private key, but I'm so scared now because it's grown into this amount, that kind of stuff. Can you bring me back to the year 2012 and I can pay off my mortgage and start my retirement early? So the, the, the counter question is right now might be it, right? I mean, like if you have a mining machine or even if you have a single card, I've had people that have been mining that I had one guy that sent me a message um, and said that he had been doing it just on his gaming cards, right? So since like, I think his thing came in in 2016, he started getting into Ethereum like he got, he, he caught Ethereum at the right point where 2015, September, 2015, it came out. He found some of the videos and, um, 2016 started doing it just on, just like downloaded the BBT multi miner and then just started running it to an address that he had downloaded. He was running the full client, uh, the ETH wallet and just was using his, his, his GPUs that he had on his machine. And he was earning like two to three Ethereum a month on the one machine that he had a couple cards in. He had one card in it and then he ended up buying another card to put it in his computer. Never built a rig, right? But had been doing it since 2016. He was earning a couple Ethereum a month. And I think he ended up with like 16 or 17 Ethereum. And luckily he made the call and sold it when it, when it hit. his goal was like, if it ever hits a thousand, I'm out because then I will be able to pay for everything and i could pay off all this stuff that i have if it ever hit a thousand so that was no matter what it was going through that was his out and he was able to hit it and that's that's kind of the thing it's establishing when you're out you know for you personally and when it makes an, an effect on your on your livelihood and why you might only have a couple hundred dollars in crypto over a long period of time and you've invested money into a machine and stuff it, you know like it's that long-term hold and it when it, it will make sense to you when you want to get out like if it hits a certain point